Hi, Laurie Donahue back again for Nana's Cookery. We're going to make an interesting cake today, which you may or may not have heard of, and it's called Queen Elizabeth cake. And there's a story behind it, which I'll tell you while I'm creaming some ingredients. But first, I'm going to tell you what the ingredients are and what the method's going to be. First, we're going to cream a, a quarter of a cup of butter. A quarter cup of butter is four tablespoons or two ounces of butter. A cup of white sugar. And we're going to cream that together. For dry ingredients, we have... Um, and then we're going to add a, a, a teaspoon of vanilla extract and one egg. We're going to stir together the dry ingredients, which are one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, the original recipe calls for nuts in the cake. And when I made it a few times ago, I didn't put the nuts in the cake. And the cake's in the oven, and I thought, oh. And there is a topping that goes on afterwards, which is basically butter and cream and coconut. And I thought, and the nuts, I like it better that way. I like the smoother cake and the, um, and the crunchy topping. Oh, and dates in hot water uh, that cool. Now, I, I know they sell baking dates in little pieces in a box. I, I find they're too dry. I'd rather buy the dates and then I cut them, cut them maybe two thirds so you can take the pit out and then just use scissors, maybe dipped in hot water if they're particularly sticky and chop them. And it called for a cup of chopped dates and I measured them after I did it and that was one cup, uh, or I'm sorry, it was one cup of chopped dates which in my case turned out to be five ounces of dates. And so you pour a, a cup of boiling water over the cup of dates and let it cool. So what you're going to end up with then is softened, more softened dates and also some liquid. But we're gonna start with the creaming. So we're going to start with the uh, butter and the sugar. And there is a difference between mixing and creaming. And the difference is the intensity of it because if you just stir together butter and sugar, I'll show you what it looks like. Now the sugar and the butter are stirred together there, but that's not creaming. We're going to do some more beating and you'll see the difference. You'll see how it comes together. And there is a story behind this cake. And that is, I've seen recipes for it for many years. And what it says is, it's the only cake that Queen Elizabeth of England allowed to be used using her name if it was used as for fundraising. And then I heard many years later, that's probably a lot of nonsense. It's probably not true, it's probably just a story. But the recipe of the cake lives on. You'll find it in many, many cookbooks. And we're creaming this sugar and butter now. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna start with my dry ingredients. I have a cup and a half measure, so when I do my cup and a half of flour, it's easy to do it all in a piece. Now I need A teaspoon of baking powder, which always comes in cans like this, and it's called double acting. And I need a teaspoon of baking soda, which always comes in a box. And you can just bring that spoon up along the edge to make sure it's level. And I need a half a teaspoon of salt, so I'm going to put that in. So now I've got my dry ingredients. I'm going to whisk those. Now this is not going to get as creamy as some butter and sugar cream mixtures are because there's less of a proportion to butter to the sugar. There's more sugar, uh, a lot more sugar than there is to the butter. But still, it's, it's, 
it's getting more and more of a similar nature. And now we're going to add, remember my egg rule, I never put an egg directly in, I always put it in a cup. If I go a year without breaking and getting shell, I won't do it, but right now I do do it. So I'm just going to put in the egg, and I'm going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla, which makes everything taste better. And you can see now how beautifully that's come together. I'm going to show you. It's hard to see from here, I know. I'm just going to show you. That's what it looks like now. So it's really nicely combined. It's got the egg in there and it's got the vanilla. It already smells good. Now I have the dry and I have the dates. And what I'm going to do is alternate putting them in. I'm going to do it uh, starting and ending with the uh, flour mixture. And I just do it in the mixer with an on and off. Um, I don't usually use the funnel that comes. He has to remind me where to look. This is terrible. I'm cooking and it's hard. <laughs> but it is what it is, folks. <laughs> so uh, I don't use a a anything over the top of my mixer. I've just always done a very quick on and off when I'm adding flour. A, mi a cake mixture doesn't really matter if you overbeat it while you're creaming, even after you've added the egg. But when you start adding the flour, you just do as little as possible. You do not want to overbeat it. You just want to do enough so that it appears it's taking in all that flour. And now I'm going to put in some of the date mixture. You see that's the dates plus the liquid from the dates. Again on and off. Now this has a broiled topping on it, so I'm not going to line my pan with parchment paper. If I were going to turn out this cake and cool it and ice it, frost it or whatever, I like parchment paper in the pan. I think it's much easier to get out, uh, but obviously if I'm going to serve it from, if I'm going to cut it from the, the pan, I can't do that. I don't want that, that paper there under the cake. So this is going to be baked and then there's a a broil topping on it. Now I'm going to do the rest. Uh, oh, got to incorporate that flour. See, I lose track. I can only do apparently one thing at a time. I do get comments from you people about a better way to do a certain thing. And I don't disagree with you at all. I think lots of times there would be an improvement. I, I think there are people who are geared to that. I had a boss in um, market research years ago, and he could walk into an office, and I swear, in five minutes, he could rearrange that whole place that it would work more efficiently, because that's how he looked at things. How can I improve this? I have to tell you, first of all, I'm doing this. I'm thinking about the camera, and in the back of my mind, I'm also thinking, will I get to the library in time, or where did I put that red scarf? So I tend to drift while I'm doing things, and I, there may be other people like me out there. Now I'm going to add the rest of the flour. Well, actually, you might have just heard something. And there's going to be a surprise at the end of this cake. And the surprise just came. So we'll see it when the cake is all done. And you'll get such a kick out of it. Okay, and now we're going to turn this into a greased 13 by 9 pan, and we're going to bake it 30 to 40 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean. You know, when, you, when you're baking a cake and you press it and it comes back and, and it doesn't feel loose, and you put a toothpick, or sometimes I use a long paper clip that I've straightened, and just stick it in, and if it comes out and there's no dampness on it, no wetness, then you, then you know it's done. But it can vary a little bit uh, from oven to oven. So we're going to put this into a 13 by 9 pan. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to use this really nice spatula that I have. 
The other thing is when you put a batter in a pan, we've talked about this before, don't put it all in one place and then try to spread it. Do it in globs all over and then just bring those globs together. It, it, it's just much less disturbing for the whole process. I'm just going to use this to smooth it. Go into the corners, come back around, and it really is going to have a very nice date flavor. I had an interesting experience one time. I was actually in Tunisia, and we went into a, uh, a date uh, where they were, you know, growing dates, the, palm, the date palms, and it was fascinating. Very interesting. And a wonderful trip. Everywhere we have gone, people have been wonderful to us. We have never had an experience where people say, oh, they don't like Americans. That's a lot of nonsense. Everywhere we've gone, South America, Egypt, Israel, Tunisia, Norway, Sweden, Chile, Peru, we've been a lot of places. And everyone has been very kind to us. So I thank you for that. We're going to put this in the oven, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, we're ready to make the topping for the cake. The cake has come out of the oven. It's still hot. In a little saucepan, I put um, uh, six tablespoons of butter and a quarter cup of table cream, that like, like coffee cream, light cream, two thirds of a cup of light brown sugar, uh, half a cup of chopped pecans. I don't really like to chop nuts in the processor. I like to do it for ground nuts, but not for chopped. So I just put them on a cup, cutting board with a chef's knife until I got different size uh, pieces there. And a cup of regular uh, sweetened coconut. And we're going to put this over heat and we're going to bring it to a boil and boil it for three minutes. And then we're going to put it on the cake. Hi, we're ready to put the topping on the cake. I could have cooked that topping while the cake was in the oven. I was doing a million other things at the same time, so I brought the cake out, but it's still hot. You do put the topping on a hot cake. Now the topping is all cooked. We're just going to spread it over the cake. It'll only take a couple minutes, and then it's going to go in the broiler. And the broiler is really, you're just going to have to really keep an eye on it because you want it, you'll, you'll start to see, you'll start to see it firm up a little and get it, but you don't want to burn it. So just be careful. I'm going to take this over the whole edge. Now you can see, I'm just going to cut this right out of this pan and put it on a plate. You really couldn't turn it over and do it because of this boiled topping. But when it comes out of the oven, it's basically done. So that's nice. We'll see you when it comes out of the broiler. Hi, here's our cake fresh from the broiler. And now we just have to wait till it cools off and we can enjoy it. You know, I really wish Queen Elizabeth were here so I could ask her if that story was true and maybe she'd share the cake with us. Oh, oh my gosh, she is here. That's Queen Elizabeth. There's a story behind it. At the Philadelphia Flower Show last year in 2013, the whole theme was Britain. And so they had different versions, they had these different things of Queen Elizabeth around. And afterwards, a local nursery sold them, different things from the flower show that were no longer being used. And a neighbor of mine down the street, Betsy, bought the queen. And the queen has been everywhere. She's been to the dentist to get her teeth cleaned. She stood in line at movies. So Betsy is taking pictures of all this. Then she gives a copy of the picture to the person who's with the queen and then puts one in the book. So it's a lot of fun to have her. She's perfectly proportioned for the queen, but she didn't say a thing about the cake. So good to see you all again. Bye-bye.